Welcome back to Currents. Well, we just saw fans outside the Apollo Theater in Harlem expressing their feelings on Michael Jackson and his death. Jackson has really attained the status of a pop idol or pop icon, and it's almost to the point that he's being worshipped. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon and something that we wanted to examine a little bit further. And here to help us is Paul Levinson. He is the professor of communication and media studies at Fordham University. He's also an author, and his latest book, New New Media, will be published by Penguin Academics next month. And Paul, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Obviously, the maelstrom of you know uh, coverage for uh, the death of Michael Jackson. A lot of people are seemingly in real mourning over it. What is it about uh, our culture, about people, that really makes them so uh, in tune and so connected in their minds and hearts to someone like Michael Jackson? Well, in Michael Jackson's case, there's something special about music, uh, the way people respond to it. Even Plato recognized this. When we listen to music, it can bring us back to an earlier time in our lives. When we first heard that song, it can bring tears to our eyes. It can get us all excited. And so Michael Jackson was not only a pop star, he was a pop star in the musical theater. And he danced, he sang, he had a beautiful voice. And so his death in particular struck very deeply in many yeah. people's psyches. Well, it, yeah, it, because like you say, it can, it can bring them back to a particular time or you know, whatnot. What, what is it about this business of really sort of worshiping him, putting him on this above, he was a mortal, he has died. You know, what is it about people that feel, that makes them feel the need to really um, be that connected, be that involved, that interested? If you think about what an angel can do, that is an angel in religion, be anywhere on the face of the earth. If you're an archangel, you can be everywhere at once. Well, Michael Jackson was that on television screens, in music that people heard. He wasn't just Michael Jackson, the individual person. He was Michael Jackson, the image that people saw in the thriller video, sure. the person that people saw on the Ed Sullivan show in the 1960s. Sure. And that's a very profound thing, to see someone all the time uh, over a 30, 40 year period of time. Right, yeah, obviously he had a very long career and it's, there's been a lot of talk that it's and sort of like Elvis or like we were seeing uh, pr perhaps Princess Diana or even religious figures like Gandhi or Mother Teresa or the Pope. What is it um, that is different perhaps um, about him uh, you know, being a non-religious figure but still having these throngs of followers and perhaps what is it that's the same? Well, what's the same is Ultimately, when you become very famous, uh, when you become a celebrity that's known around the world, it doesn't really matter what the reason is that you've become so famous. It could be a political reason, such as Barack Obama is now a worldwide celebrity. It could be a reason uh, having to do with religion, uh, such as the Pope or Mother Teresa. It could be a reason having to do with science. Albert Einstein was that level of celebrity. And so in, in Michael Jackson's case, the particular flavor of the celebrity was the pop icon music star, the power of music, his very otherworldly visual image. I mean, if you think about what he looked like, right, yeah. he didn't look like anybody else. He, no, well, and yeah. he changed, obviously, the That's way that right. he looked, either intentionally or whatever, over the course of time. That's right. Uh, but I think that a lot of people, that, well, that gets to my other point a little bit is, what is it about perhaps a celebrity like him or an entertainer, whatever you want to call it, that makes people <coughs> sort of perhaps be self-reflective in some respect? I mean, do people see themselves within him? Are they looking to be more like him? Do they, you know, and mind you, he wasn't always worshipped. He was, I mean, there were throngs outside that courthouse when he was, you know, uh, in there. He, you know, obviously they have joked about a lot of things about him over the you know course yeah. of time and then he comes back and everybody loves him and then now he dies and everybody even loves him more yeah well several things about that one is I think there are at least two reasons that people felt and still feel so strongly about Michael Jackson one is they wanted to be like him to be able to dance like him that's what the moonwalk was all about it's so cool so smooth <laughs> so effortless right. the other thing though is that his songs were in their own way very profound they spoke to us 
One of my favorite Michael Jackson songs is uh, She's Out of My Life, yeah. where he actually breaks down and cries at the end of the song. That yeah. was, I think it was maybe like 1979, yeah. so it was sort of in the mid part of his career. And anyone who's ever had someone leave them that they loved in a romantic sense can instantly relate to that song. It's almost like poetry in that respect. It is like poetry. What are some of the dangers, though, perhaps, of not having your organized, if you are whatever your faith may be, however a personal, however a person may construct their own faith, Catholic, you know, anything, Muslim, Jewish, anything, atheist, whatever, there's sort of a moral compass perhaps that we would like to think that most people try to aspire to. What's perhaps the danger in looking toward a celebrity, a Michael Jackson, uh, whomever, um, that is immortal, as opposed to perhaps grounding yourself and sending yourself more on, you know, the true faith aspect of things? I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. In fact, I think we are multitasking beings when it comes to having faith and idolizing people. So I think we're perfectly capable of believing in a religion or being an atheist, believing in a political figure or disagreeing with that figure, and loving various pop stars. And not only that, pop stars in music, pop stars in the movies, pop stars on right. television. Right. All of that appeals to the same basic human need. Well, we just have a couple of seconds. It, I don't know what exactly you talk about in your new book, The New New Media, but obviously, what do you think of this new phenomenon, of this new media? How is this playing into the way this is playing out on a worldwide stage? It's enabling a world dialogue that's happening much faster than ever before. Huge proportions. Nathaniel Hawthorne talked about in the House of the Seven Gables how the earth was like a brain teeming with information. He was talking about the telegraph. Sure, wow. Yeah. <laughs> a lot's changed since then. That's right. Well, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Fascinating discussion. I, I, I think it's quite, quite cool. Uh, Professor Paul Levinson of Communication at and Media Studies at Fordham University.